Okay, so we've been through detailed aspects of orthopedic evaluation, and if you've watched the whole thing, it's taken some time. What I want to do now is, from the point of starting with the general hands-on evaluation, I want to show you an orthopedic evaluation that I would do in real time. So you can see it only really takes a few minutes to, um, to do a good, thorough orthopedic evaluation. So, let's not forget though that prior to this, we had the period of observation while we were talking to the owner and gathering the history, we were observing the way the dog moved, rested and stood. But now let's start with the hands-on part. So the first thing I would do is stand over a dog like this and just start assessing muscle mass over the scapula. Then I'm going to come down, assess tricep muscle mass. Take the opportunity to run my fingers over the elbows to assess for effusion or thickening, down over the antebrachium, and again assess for effusion or thickening over the carpi. I then come to the back end and make an assessment of quadriceps muscle mass, hamstring muscle mass, assess for effusion and thickening at the stifle, same thing down at the hock, assessing for effusion, thickening. We can then start to go through each individual limb and we start with the forelimb, good girl, starting at the distal limb through each toe, flexion and extension, as well as that kind of pulling and twisting, assessing the nails, pads, interdigital space, and the sesamoids. Gentle palpation on the metacarpals, then coming up to the carpus. Again, make another assessment to see whether there's any effusion or thickening. Assessing flexion and extension, flexion and extension. Testing for medial stability, lateral stability. Palpating the radius and ulna as we come up the limb. Then assessing the elbow for flexion and extension. Flexion with supination, with pronation and extension. Assessing the humerus, then up to the shoulder joint. Shoulder flexion, shoulder extension, shoulder flexion with concurrent elbow extension, and then assessing for medial stability of the shoulder with abduction. Assessing the scapula, and for neck pain, and not forgetting to assess the axilla. Now we move to a hind limb. Start off at the distal limb, toes. And if we found anything, we'd come in there with more detail, assessing the pads, nails, interdigital space. Up to the hock, make sure the hock feels normal. Assess it in flexion, extension, flexion, extension. Assess for stability of the hock. Stress the medial aspect, the lateral aspect. Palpate the tibia and fibula. Coming up to the stifle. Assess it in extension, flexion, extension, flexion. Also assess for integrity of the cruciate ligament here with draw and tibial thrust. Assessing stability of the patella by putting the stifle in extension and trying to luxate the patella medially, trying to luxate the patella laterally. Then moving up to assessment of the femur quadriceps muscle mass again, hamstrings, up to the hip joint, assessing flexion and extension by doing a little bit of abduction and then extension, the hip joint, abduction, extension, flexion, abduction, extension, assess for the iliopsoas muscle, and finally coming down the spine, 
and assessing, assessing comfort of the spine. And the one thing we'd add on the end here is to put the dog in lateral recumbency and do what I would call the pelvic tilt test to assess lumbar sacral comfort. Okay, so as I went through that real-time orthopedic evaluation, you may have noticed that I missed out a couple of manipulations that we talked about earlier. But what I did do is to perform all the important evaluations. And if I had detected an adverse response to any of those manipulations, I would have come back to that joint and assessed it in a lot more detail, doing the full evaluation of that individual joint. Now, let's just finish by talking about detecting an adverse reaction, which is essentially detecting a pain response. What you have to remember is that dogs have been bred to please us. And so very often, the demonstration of pain is muted. And so as you're doing the evaluation, you need to be watchful of tiny signs that might indicate discomfort. For example, a panting dog might stop panting. Um, a dog that feels relaxed might just tense up a little bit. And you'll feel that as you're connected to the dog doing the evaluation. Or as we talked about earlier on, you might do a particular evaluation such as elbow extension and just feel the dog pull away from you very slightly. Obviously, the more demonstrative examples of pain are easier to detect. The head moving around, the dog trying to pull away from you. Um, so certainly, you know, we are looking for those, but don't forget those subtle indicators that there is discomfort present.